Thank you very much indeed, uh, Wendy, for that nice introduction and welcome everyone to this uh, webinar uh, dealing with the diagnosis and treatment of hypercalcemia. Before we deal with the uh, treatment of hypercalcemia, then uh, we need to uh, look at the uh, physiology of calcium uh, and to realize that um, the calcium in the blood is uh, part of the calcium pool. Uh, it's added to by gastrointestinal absorption uh, and is lost through bone formation and urinary excre excretion, uh, as well as being lost in milk and in feces. It's always important to realize that bone is not an inert substance and it's constantly turning over with bone formation and bone resorption. And so it's easy for the calcium level to remain within uh, very precise limits. Calcium in the blood is usually measured as total calcium and total calcium includes uh, the protein bound calcium which is not available for uh, physiological uh, use easily, uh, and chelated calcium. And the protein bound and chelated calcium accounts for 50% of the total calcium. The ionized calcium, which is the physiologically active calcium, uh, is 50% of the total in most instances. Now, occasionally we measure both total and ionized but usually they say the same kind of thing about a particular patient. But there are instances where the uh, levels can differ, particularly when they're close to the uh, uh, top or bottom of the reference range. The functions of calcium are that they are, calcium is really important in nerve conduction and neurotransmission, muscular contraction, and other areas of contraction. It's also important in membrane stability and membrane transport, as well as being involved in enzymatic reactions, hormone secretion, uh, blood co coagulation, and uh, bone formation, cell division, and cell growth. Calcium is maintained uh, within its tight limit by three major hormones. Uh, parathyroid hormone, uh, promotes calcium resorption from the renal tubules and promotes phosphate excretion from the renal tubules. It activates vitamin D uh, and promotes calcium absorption from the intestines and calcium reabsorption from bone. Its actions, therefore, are to increase blood calcium concentrations. Calcitonin, which is produced in the uh, C cells of the thyroid gland, is what is often referred to as an emergency hormone. It is designed to prevent hypercalcemia and in fact is only elaborated at times when calcium levels are going above the reference range. It inhibits bone resorption and increases renal excretion of both calcium and phosphate. In the normal animal, you cannot measure calcitonin. It's only there in times of uh, emergency. The other hormone that is important in the uh, metabolism of calcium is vitamin D. Vitamin D promotes calcium absorption from the intestines. It's essential for normal calcification of bone and with, together with parathyroid hormone promotes calcium reabsorption from bone. Uh, so it's actively involved along with PTH in trying to raise calcium concentrations. Now there are a number of forms of vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D3 is the uh, uh, available vitamin D in, in the diet and that is converted in the liver to 25-hydroxycholecalciferol. And 25-hydroxycholecalciferol is further activated to 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol in the kidney by the 1-alpha hydroxylase enzyme. And the 1-alpha hydroxylase enzyme is activated through PTH and through low phosphate uh, and the active form of vitamin D, 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol, sometimes called calcitriol, uh, is the one that is most active in the body. Now we need some definitions for hypercalcemia. Uh, the normal ranges for healthy cats and dogs suggest that a total calcium in the dog uh, varies between 2.3 and 2.8 and in the cat from 2.1 to 2.8. 
the mean uh, calcium concentration is obviously within that uh, range. Ionized calcium uh, is in the reference range from 1.2 to 1.4 millimoles per litre, that is about half uh, of uh, the total calcium. Ionase calcium, however, does vary and, and it's worthwhile trying to get it measured as soon as possible fo following uh, collection of the blood sample, as exposure to air increases the pH within the sample, which then decreases the amount of ionized calcium uh, in the uh, sample. So it is important to manage the samples well before measurement. In terms of hypercalcemia, we can divide it into uh, mild, moderate and severe. Mild hypercalcemia would be around the uh, 3.0 millimoles per litre, so 2.9 to 3.2, whereas moderate hypercalcemia is 3.3 to 3.7, and that is an area where we should be uh, trying to work out the cause of hypercalcemia. And in severe hypercalcemia, greater than 3.7, there will be damage to organs through uh, uh, dystrophic mineralization, which will uh, further uh, damage some of the essential organs, such as the kidney. The clinical signs of hypercalcemia are principally polydipsia and polyuria, and polyuria occurs because calcium is laid down in the basement membranes of the collecting tubule of the nephron, which then makes it insensitive to antidiuretic hormone. So the uh, urine that passes out is dilute and unconcentrated and therefore there's a compensatory polydipsia to compensate for that polyuria. In addition to polydipsia and polyuria, the animal may also show signs of anorexia, vomiting, constipation and weight loss associated with reduced muscle tone in the gastrointestinal tract. There may also be lethargy, listlessness, depression and coma as it depresses the neurological um, uh, features. And muscle wasting, weakness, twitching, uh, shaking and exercise intolerance occurs because the muscle uh, contracts poorly uh, in hypercalcemia. In some cases, you may also get urinary tract signs. Apart from urinary incontinence associated with polyuria, uh, there may be frequency straining and hematuria because uh, of uh, uroliths within the urinary tract. The severity of signs of hypercalcemia depends on the magnitude, the rate of development, and also the duration of the hypercalcemia. In longer term hypercalcemia, the clinical signs and the manifestations of the disease are likely to get worse. The differential diagnosis of hypercalcemia includes error of interpretation, which we'll discuss uh, in the next slide, hypercalcemia of malignancy, which in dogs accounts for 50% of cases of hypercalcemia, hypoadrenocorticism, which in dogs accounts for about 30% of cases of hypercalcemia, chronic renal failure, mainly in young dogs where there's active turnover uh, of, of calcium, primary hyperparathyroidism, granulomatous disease, vitamin D intoxication, and non-neoplastic bone disorders may sometimes cause mild elevations of hypercalcemia. So that's our, our differential list. What is error of interpretation? Well, in error of interpretation, these are usually cases that have a calcium concentration just above the top of the reference range, usually around about 3.0 millimoles per litre. They are mild hypercalcemic cases. The potential causes of hypercalcemia in these cases includes non-fasting, although this has a fairly minimal effect on total calcium, young growing animals, which can have higher levels of calcium than older animals, laboratory error, and spurious elevations associated with uh, uh, lipemia and hyperlipidemia. The diagnostic approach to hypercalcemia uh, should include a routine hematology, biochemistry screen,